What's up, everybody? Welcome to BioWare 3 Raw TV. Let me fix this fucking camera angle. That's better. Make it square. Today, we're going to talk about the impending pro hormone ban. And, you know, I guess this thing just went through the other day. I saw Aaron Singerman and PJ Braun's video they put up about it, where they were talking about they've actually been planning for this for a long time. And you can kind of knew this was coming at some point. There's no doubt about it. When the first uh, Andro products came out back in, I don't know, what, like 90. Six or something like that, 97 maybe. I mean, the things are powerful. They worked. You could buy them at vitamin stores. You know, most places wouldn't sell them to anybody under 18. I mean, it's not that they were regulated, but they were uh, strong products available on the market. They worked well. And, you know, of course, it took, I think it was Mark McGuire, I believe it was. I, I think it was the whole baseball thing. And he, you know, had them in his locker. It was like Androstein Dion or something like that. Andro, it was an Andro product. And next thing you know, it became a big thing and they were all fucking banned and, you know, it was like, okay, great, we got another product that if I just didn't want to take steroids anymore, I could take these and not have to skirt around the law, but now those are gone too. And they found out that there's all these other analogs in fucking science textbooks that are not necessarily new, that they found this shit a long time ago when they were looking for different um, versions of steroids. Some of them were too toxic, some of them were too hard to make, some of them just were, you know, for whatever reasons, never made it into the spotlight or actually on the, the chemical market. But they're already there, and they're unclassified due to the fact that they never made it on the market. Now, the thing about these things are is the reasons why they weren't put out there is they weren't cost efficient. Effectiveness, they were probably too strong, most of them, and they were toxic. So basically, there was a good reason that they didn't make it on the market to begin with. So now what happened is these companies realized, well, shit, I could take this compound, bottle it, put a name like Super Fucking Megadrol or whatever on it, put it on the market, and it's not illegal. Well, quickly they figured that out. You know, the, the uh, FDA or the DEA, or FDA, I think it's the FDA, figured that out, ban that shit. And one at a time, they'll go back to the, the textbooks, grab another one, relabel it. Now it's Super Mega Draw 2, you know, 2.0 or whatever. And they put that one out until that one's banned. So now, instead of doing this cat and mouse game, the FDA is just like, you know what? Fuck this. We're going to ban anything like this. So that way, there, anything on those lists are now not going to be legal. So stop fucking around because we're not going to deal with it anymore. And if this thing goes through, that's the way it's going to be. Now, here's the thing. People ask me my opinion. Like, what do you think of it? I think it's good and bad at the same time. And you're like, good. Why would it be good, Jerry? That's fucked up. You want to take away our freedoms. Hang on a second. I think it's bad because, you know what? It is taking away our freedoms. You should have the right to choose what you put in your body. If you can buy cigarettes, which are fucking unbelievably bad for you, and alcohol, and combine alcohol and Tylenol at the same time, if you're an adult, then you should be able to buy these pro hormones. Now, the reason why it's good is the fact that there are some people getting their hands on these things that should not be using them. They're fucking dumb. They use them the wrong way, or young kids that shouldn't even be getting their hands on them can get them on, get their hands on them online and having issues with those. I, do, I absolutely get fucking emails almost every fucking day from people from ages 14 to 25, roughly. Not The older guy's not really fucking with it. But they have complications due to these fucking pro-hormones that they take. And it screws them up. And their test is levels anywhere from fucking 30 to like 150 at like 19 years old. There's no fucking way that should be happening. And it's not changing when they go off. They fuck themselves up. Liver enzymes go up. I mean, there's a lot of shit that happens with these things. When you give them to people in the wrong hand. If you give it to an 18-year-old kid and it's just take two daily, I can almost guarantee fucking to you he's going to take four to six of those things daily. And that's the difference between taking like Anadrol 50. Two tablets, 100 milligrams. That's not going to kill you. But if you look at the studies they did that caused cancer, it was five to seven tablets, which is what like an 18-year-old kid's going to take, which changes that from a moderately safe compound to an extremely dangerous compound. It's also good, I, the way I see it, is because as soon as this shit gets pulled off the market, it's going to be on the black market. It's going to fucking pop up left and right because it's going to be in demand. And I mean, it's the same thing as Superdraw. Superdraw is taken off the shelf, Mdraw, Superdraw, whatever the fuck you want to call it. And immediately, you could find it on the black market. It's one of the biggest fucking things sought after right now. People are like, Anadrol? No, nah, you get Superdrol? What the fuck? Anadrol is a staple that's been around for years. Yeah, but I want Superdrol. People want Superdrol now because it's banned and it's new. So as soon as it comes off the, you know, the, the shelves in the stores and online, you're going to be able to find it on the black market. Now, why is that good that it's on the black market but not on the store shelves? Because people on the black market are not usually the dumb fucks that are buying it on the shelves. If you have those connections and those ways of finding things like that, more than likely you're not as big a fucking dumbass as those fucking 14-year-old kid with his dad's credit card ordering online fucking himself up. 
that 14 year old kid is not going to get that fucking pro hormone from somebody at the gym. He's not going to be able to walk in there and go, I want to get big. Can I, you got this, that, and the other thing. And the fucking dude that's in their training that's on that shit is going to look at him and be like, you're a 14 year old kid, get the fuck away from me. Because they don't want to get in trouble selling it to him because you know why? It's illegal. It's black market. So it kind of regulates and it, it, it'll kind of weed out the people that shouldn't be fucking using it. And uh, like, you know, anything else. I mean, prohibition, let's face facts. You know, if alcohol is illegal, it flowed freely on the underground. I mean, anytime you make something illegal, it's, you know, every drug is that's illegal. Marijuana, cocaine, heroin. I mean, I never had a fucking problem finding any of those drugs when I was partying. I never had a problem finding ecstasy. All that shit's illegal. However, the people that really shouldn't be taking it, that didn't respect the stuff enough, that didn't have the connections, didn't spend the time looking for it, they're probably the ones that shouldn't be taking ecstasy because they're going to take four or five tablets at one time and fucking kill themselves. So you see, like, there's good and bad things. You know, I mean, one of the other bad things, too, is, um, you know, it could spike the price when it hits the black market. But then again, it may actually drop the price when it hits the black market because you're going to have different places competing with each other. I don't want to say dealers, but different people competing with each other because this stuff will be overseas. It's still going to be legal. So you have different people competing with each other and able to cut prices to compete. So, I mean, there's good and bad things, both sides, I see. Me, I personally don't fucking use the shit. It, I, doesn't, I don't care. I don't give a shit if the stuff fucking gets taken off the planet forever. It doesn't fucking matter to me. Um, for the people that are using it now, I mean, there's going to be a grace period. Stock up on the shit. You know, I mean, they're saying that, you know, Blackstone Labs and some companies like that are saying that they have, you know, a plan. They have a plan of coming out with new products that are just as potent, but are not illegal. So... I mean, you could take your chances with shit like that, but, you know, the way that this thing is written, those things could be pulled too. So, it just depends on, you know, how far you're willing to go to get those pro-hormones as far as going to like a black market or something, but I don't think it's going to really change much in that aspect. Biosetraining at gmail.com. Leave comments down below, but don't fight. www.biosetraining.com is a blog and where it's the pro-hormone bicep. Get that sleeve up. It's the pro-hormone bicep and we're out.